So did you always want to have your own research group or to stay in science? Not really. <laughs> science sisters, they're here to talk. You just realize how much more can be done. And, and it's really, it's really nice. You know learn a lot. What's all. good is that you have people from different backgrounds. We're so there you with Oh yeah, she's your home. <laughs> yes and no. Science sisters, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Science Sisters. I'm your host Iris van Zelst and today I'm joined by Ina Pleza to talk about how you can build a research group. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. You are my boss and you are making your own research group of which I am part. Today we're going to try to find out how you got there. <laughs> so what I've heard is that you've been in Germany for a long time but you're originally from Romania. Yeah. So true. how did you get here? All right. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. I'm originally from Romania. I've been born in Bucharest. And then after high school, I decided that I want to go abroad to study. And I was looking around and yeah, I, I just basically decided to go to Germany. In part because, for example, in Germany, you don't have to pay taxes to study. So that made the decision a bit easier. <laughs> okay, good. And then, yeah, and then I started to learn German. And uh, and then I started my university in Germany. So I started studying in Passau, which is a small city. It's a student city. I started there uh, to study and I studied computer science and mathematics. Ah. So, and then at the end of the studies, so after I got my diploma, I decided that I wanted to stay in science. So then I started to look around where I can do this. Then I saw an advertisement for a PhD position at, uh, at DLR here and I applied for it. And then I had my interview and then I got the position and I started my PhD here. <laughs> and you've been here ever since? And I've been here ever, ever since, yeah. Wow, that's quite unique in general, right? In yeah. academia. <laughs> yes, that is true. So I, yeah, I started uh, here with my PhD position. So I switched from computer science to geoscience. But in principle, like what, what I was working on was to build computer models, to mm -hmm. look at the interior of planets, to see how we can link the processes that we have in the interior to what we have at the surface and how we can explain data that we get from planetary missions. And in principle, it's a lot of code development, right? Testing and then applying your model to explain data. So it's not too far away from, from computer science. It's actually quite related, <laughs> if I'm honest. So yeah, so I, I was working on Mars, doing uh, basically computer models for, for the interior of Mars. And at the end of my PhD study, there was the opportunity to stay as a postdoc and to get involved with the inside mission. Okay. So that was kind of like a super nice continuation of what I have been doing mm -hmm. in, in my PhD thesis. So yeah, that's how I stayed. Then had the opportunity to apply for funding to build my own group. So that was uh, yeah something that I didn't want to miss. Uh, <laughs> so does this mean you're now permanent here? Well, <laughs> I would say at least for the for the duration of my group. So how long is that? It's not entirely kind of like it, it, there's not a, like a, um, a fixed term when the group okay. ends because the group started in 2019, but we didn't start with all positions at once. Right. So these positions, these PhDs and postdoc positions are all part of the same funding that you got to yeah, create your own exactly. group. So how does that work? Because I know that like a lot of us are paid by DAD, the German Academic Exchange Service, but... Mm -hmm. You just applied to that and then they gave you that. So it's a bit more complicated, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, in principle, the, the positions are, depending on, on postdocs and PhD students, they somewhere between two to four years. And the funding, the actual funding, it's a funding from the DLR. So uh, I have applied for this funding from DLR and I got the funding to do research and to build my own group. And the, the topic was Mars and Venus. And then I remember that, um, so I had to go to uh, DLR headquarters in Cologne. And yeah, and I had kind of like a panel. I had to pre present slides and to explain what I have uh, in mind for the group and what kind of science we will do. And then I kind of showed the first because we had at that time the first pictures from Mars with Insight. And I think that was a really good impression at that time. Very timely. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. <laughs> that was really exciting. So w when preparing the proposal for the research group, did you know how many people you were going to ask for? Well, I had a kind of like a specific amount of money, so a oh, right. sum. Yes. Right. And then I 
needed to, uh, so I had to write down what kind of science do I want to do, what are the main questions that I want to answer with the group, what we will be working on, but uh, in terms of the positions it was more, more flexible. You know, I had this amount of uh, money, this sum of money that I had to apply for, and then I could then decide how I want to, to spend that money. So Since the funding will end at some point, wouldn't it make sense to have some kind of longevity in in this? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're perfectly right because I mean there is so much that still needs to be done. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's not that uh, well we answer the questions that we propose and we are finished yeah. and we don't have anything to do. Yeah. It's it, each time that you work towards a specific pro in a specific pro project, you just realize how much more can be done, right? So it's always, uh, yeah, oh yeah, that can be done, and that can be done, and that could be also interesting. <laughs> yeah, and the idea is to, to try to kind of continue the group, but for that we have to apply for different funding. So and there are different um, possibilities, at least in Germany we have the German Research Foundation, where you can apply even with your own project, that means funding for yourself, mm -hmm. But also with uh, projects in which you have uh, PhD positions, but also postdoc positions, and there are also other funding schemes, of course, also at uh, European level, like Curie uh, and Alexander von, von Humboldt Foundation. Uh, they have all different requirements. This is kind of the idea in the end that uh, the group was the starting point, and this will allow us to continue by having different other funding opportunities. Okay. But still very much dependent on funding. Yeah, that's true. Annoying. Yeah. <laughs> In the end, if you have a really good idea and you have a really strong project, um, I think there are good chances to, to get funding, at okay. least from these kind of um, funding opportunities that, that I just said. That was the idea behind, right? The uh, funding that I got uh, was to build the group and uh, to have enough resources for the group to do, to do the research. But yeah, it's it's really nice. So, so having having your own group, it just kind of it makes you realize how many ideas you have, and it gives you the opportunity to actually work on all these ideas through through the group members. Because yeah, the time is limited, <laughs> right? You will not be able to to do this kind of uh, research on your own. So that's why, and and it's really nice. You learn a lot. So I did learn a lot uh, by having the group, and yeah, and then looking at different topics, right? That otherwise you would not be able to, mm. to look at. So did you always want to have your own research group? Not really. I, I would I would say that during the PhD level, you're not really thinking about this. You have your own project. I and, mean, yeah. You're busy right, with that. You're super busy with that. <laughs> and, and then in the first years of postdoc is also you have, you can work more focused because you have also your own projects, right? And then you have to focus on them. But then at some point you just realize, okay, I want to do this and I also want to do this. And there are so many ideas that I cannot really do it on my own and I really have to look what are the possibilities to actually tackle all, all these uh, all these ideas and it's kind of like a natural step to, to, to think about building your own group because that's mm -hmm. what it gives you the, the opportunity to, to do this kind of uh, research of topics but if you have your own group then you can do much more and you can learn a lot uh, by, by having different topics also kind of like in a in a comparative way, right? Because you just look at different, for example, in our group, we look at different planets. We look at Mars, we look at Venus. We also look at Mercury, icy moons, and so on. And, and it's kind of like also to have all these different aspects, right? To have mm -hmm. all these different processes. Otherwise, if you would focus only on a specific body, then you wouldn't realize. And what, what's good is that you have people from different backgrounds and yes. you, can, you can learn a lot. So did you have a lot of experience with uh, supervision? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. So I did have um, several student projects, right, uh, ranging from internships to uh, bachelor and master theses. Um, also, I've been um, involved as co-supervision um, right. yeah. in, in PhD theses, uh, but I didn't have like a... Uh, a really strong focus on, on supervision before. Uh, so that's why I think it's also good if you have your own group to learn all the aspects of, of uh, supervision as well. And it's uh, it's a different thing if you if you if you are the supervisor of a, a bachelor thesis or an internship, which are relatively short, compared to a PhD thesis or even yes. a postdoc project. Uh, both in terms of the level of work, but also in terms of the duration, right? So yeah. um, 
time management. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So what have you learned? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're part of the group, but what do you like at the group? <laughs> I like that it is a nice group. Like, I don't know if this is a factor in the selection of people, but I, I feel like everyone fits really well together and gets along really well. The, I don't know, the freedom and the confidence you instill in us, and I think it kind of resonates throughout everyone, which then makes it a really nice place to work and everyone being very uplifting and nice. Well, I think it's it's a I mean time during your PhD and during your first years of postdocs. This is this should be fun. You should be have you, you should you should have like the opportunity to work on on projects that you really like and um, and yeah this is kind of like the the idea behind right and in speaking of the of the group what what was also the idea behind the group is to have a diverse group so that we can also learn from each other because not everyone knows a specific aspect in planetary science and um, people have uh, their preferred planetary bodies yeah. their preferred methods and uh, I think it's kind Kind of like it, it, it strengthens the um, the research if you bring different aspects together, yeah. and bro both from modeling but also from observations, and then looking in a in a comparative way, right? That's at the um, planetary bodies that we have in the solar system and even even beyond, right? And I think it's uh, kind of like a a strength also of the institutes that yeah. we're in he here, right? Because you have different departments that look at different aspects, right? So you have the you have the planetary physics department where we are in, but we we also have the planetary atmosphere, yeah. planetary geology, uh, the geodesy department, and also we have the people building the instruments, yeah. right? So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like a yeah. unique constellation, right? It's really cool <laughs> that everything is actually here. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is your favorite planet? Is it Mars? Well, I guess so. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would say yes. It's kind of like when when you when you work so much time uh, oh, yeah. like during the PhD and during uh, your postdoc um, on a the planet, then it's kind of becoming your favorite planet but it's difficult to say right because there are so many uh interesting aspects on all the other planets right i mean look yes. at the moon look at venus yeah um, that there's like so many things we don't know about and I know. and you you need the the science to try to understand how they have evolved and as i said i think i think it's difficult to say i would have a tendency towards mars <laughs> <laughs> but um i think it's also interesting to look in in, in comparison, right? What can we learn if we compare now Mars to Venus to the Earth to the Moon? How how they have evolved, and this can also teach us how what to what to expect from other solar systems, right? From for exoplanets. So interesting because there are so many different aspects, right? And there, like for example, processes that you have on icy moons, right? Um, yeah. They're completely different. Um, and you start wondering, okay, how how does that work? Um, what what do we have to model in order to understand? Okay, uh, can we explain features that we observe at the surface, you know, feature that we observe in the in the data, and how is that different from uh, what we do for Mars or for Venus or for the Moon or Mercury and so on, right? So um, yeah, it makes it it makes it very very interesting, it's especially by by looking at different planets, right? It kind of also gives you ideas, right, to test, like, yeah, this process is important for, I don't know, icy moons. Would it be important also for the moon? Exactly. Endless, endless questions that arise. Which is, which is cool. I always feel like in the beginning of my PhD, I was like, oh, you know, if I want to have a career in science, like you need to have questions and you need to have things to, to focus on and, and want to further explore. It and comes with time. <laughs> it comes with time. And I think it also comes with the topic. So would you ever leave Germany slash Berlin slash DLR if it would mean you could pursue further a research group or how does that balance for you? Well, in or principle, yes. Depends on like what opportunities um, are and also what what would be in terms of, of the group and how to uh, how to pursue. But as I said, what I like the most here is that you have like both the engineering aspects and the scientific aspects, the science behind, and to combine them together. I think it's not something that you find everywhere. So that's what I like the most here. And I like the group in which we are, so mm. I, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, and also the department itself, right? We have so many links to our colleagues uh, around and also from the other departments. So that's, that's also a, a very nice atmosphere. I think it's important.
So, basically, write a lot of proposals. In principle. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope for the best. And have lots of ideas, which again comes with time. So nobody should feel pressured to come up with ideas. Yeah, and exactly. Well. And, I mean, you, you typically have like a specific topic on which you work on, then the more you work on, on a specific topic, it can happen that you get like a lot of ideas. Like, yeah, this could tie up to answering yeah. this question or looking more in detail into this. And um, yeah, it, it comes also with the um, with, with the work that you do, right? Mm -hmm. The ideas come, come, uh, come with time and also with the topic that you're working on. Yeah, I mean, for me, it also always helps if you are uh, attending like seminars mm -hmm. or keynote talks or review papers even. There will always be a section of things we don't know yet. Which you should yeah. pay attention exactly. to <laughs> because you're like, oh, this is, we don't know this yet. Like, how could I, you know, with my skills and, and things that I know, exactly. uh, well, what work needs towards to be done that? Yeah, the exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you don't need to completely solve the whole question immediately because that will be probably quite hard with uh, like uh, the stepping stones. And also, sometimes in really, really small technical talks, if there is like an assumption they mm -hmm. do or something, and yeah, you'll yeah. just clock the assumption like. What does what that is? mean? Yeah. <laughs> so start small and then go bigger. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then you have your own research group and you can study all the things you like. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. This is where my lack of preparation comes in. <laughs> which, which might actually not be too bad because, because I need to chat for like hours.